Hello, I'm Dr. Rausch. Uh, I put together kind of an introduction to this historical simulations course that I'll be teaching in the spring, just to give you an idea of what the course is about. I've had students say, what is this course even about? <laughs> um, and uh, make sure it's something that you're interested in, and also just kind of get the ball rolling in case you have any questions. So first of all, this is a new experimental class. Um, the History 442, um, you may have seen sometimes History 441, those are courses the, it's kind of a slot that we put something we want to experiment with, and then if we like it, if students like it, we make it into a regular course. So if this course goes well, it might become a regular course that will be taught um, regularly. So it's a new experimental class. And it was created to support the public history major. Now, if you're not public history, that's fine. It's all right. You don't have to be public history. But what caused me to want to create the course was I felt like we needed another public history course in order to make sure people could complete the major without any problems. Um, in terms of sequencing and so forth. So that's why this class is exists. You can still take it if you're not in public history, but that's what I was thinking about when I made it. Now, to tell you a little bit myself, I have a background in gaming, um, tabletop RPGs, so basically like things like Dungeons & Dragons, I grew up playing that, and um, PC gaming. Um, I uh, don't usually game much anymore, uh, though I do occasionally play some games with my kids. And um, I also started, starting in high school, I began to be a reenactor. Um, and now I do living history. So, and I did, did a American Civil War when I was in high school. I was 19th Indiana. Um, I did World War I for a while. But now I do Colonial based out of 96. And one thing that, um, so that's kind of a little bit of background myself. And one thing um, I have been redoing, revising my course significantly. Most of my courses were pretty straightforward before COVID-19. They were just kind of lecture classes with a bit of discussion, uh, some videos, things like that. But after COVID-19, um, I shifted more and more to online hybrids. Uh, I didn't want to go completely online. Uh, I felt like the, the, it was good to be together with students, especially during that difficult time when people weren't getting a lot of human contact. So... Um, I did online hybrids because then I could split the class in half and uh, we could follow social distancing rules that way. And um, it was also set up at the time so that people, if they couldn't come, they could easily catch up, so on and so forth. But um, so what happened was if we're meeting in, per you know, if we're doing an online hybrid, I, I didn't feel like I should just lecture when we when we met. Right. You know, if, I, if I'm going to make people come to school, why would I just give a lecture? Right. When they're already hearing lectures online. So I need to do something different. So I started developing more activities and simulations um, for my classes. And, you know, public history, a big part of public history is the idea of teaching history outside the classroom, right? Um, how do we reach people when we're not behind uh, it within a classroom setting, right? How do we do that? And so I wanted, I was trying to think, how do I bring all this stuff together, right? I have this interest in gaming, reenacting students also many students have an interest in gaming and gaming some have an interest in living history and reenacting i noticed a lot of students have hands-on skills like they're really good at not simply writing papers but like building or making things and um you know i thought okay how can i bring this all together in a you know to use what i've learned from gaming and reenacting to help students learn more about public history and how to teach outside the classroom and I think what these things do, what gaming and reenacting do, is they, they help people to experience history. You can't build a time machine, but you do get a deeper sense of what it was like to live in a historical period when you actually dress up like someone from that time period and try and live like they do. All right. When I was a World War I reenactor, I slept in a trench. Sleeping in a trench is very uncomfortable. Um, it, I remember as a Civil War reenactor getting wet and not being able to get dry because everything was literally wet. Um, and I, won't, I can multiply stories, but the idea is that this gives you a sense of how difficult it is. When you engage in a resource management game, right, or a game where you have very limited knowledge, uh, such as a war game, it's, you, you learn about, well, yeah, it's, it's easy to say that this general should have done this in retrospect, it's much different when you're trying to make the decisions under a time limit or with limited information. So that's kind of the inspiration for this course, right? Um, is to, to look at this issue. How do we use things like simulations, like activities, like games, reenacting to help immerse people in history and better understand it? So the structure of the course, it's an online hybrid. Um, it will never meet on Fridays, um, but you, if you look at the course calendar, it says Monday, Wednesday. So for the first few weeks, we'll meet on, uh, and I want to stress this could change, 
this is what I'm thinking right now, but for the first few weeks, we'll meet on Mondays and Wednesdays, and the last few weeks, we'll also meet Mondays and Wednesdays. And the idea is the first few weeks, we'll be setting up the course, and in the last few weeks, you'll pre be presenting what you've accomplished, right? And we'll need to meet twice a week to do that. Later, we'll shift to some people coming on Monday and some coming on Wednesday. And during that period, we'll be running the games and simulations. Um, so that's where we'll actually have to participate in that kind of thing, right? We'll, we will actually play a game. I'm thinking of something like Access and Allies, uh, the 1941 version, because the other ones takes a long. That would be an example. Uh, we'll, we'll play a war game together. Um, and so hopefully that will be interesting. And the, since it's an online hybrid, there will be videos that you watch. Mostly, most of them will not be ones I made. There'll be things by war gamers. Um, there'll be things by people who are in living history who talk about what it is to develop a living history persona and things like that. And when we meet Mondays and Wednesdays, there will only be approximately an hour vi of videos like that, maybe more if there's not many readings. When we only meet once a week, you'll have two hours of that. So we'll always be meeting that three hour requirement. It's just sometimes you'll have more to do on your own. Sometimes you'll have more to do in class. Now, then what makes this serious? Because someone could say, okay, so you're watching videos about people playing games, and then you're playing games. What makes this a real class? One thing is the assignments, and I'll get to those momentarily, but just to show you how serious and how important this are, is, um, one important module that, or section that we'll do is on war games. War games are really good, not 100%, but they're really good at predicting what could happen. So, for example, and war games are old. So, for example, in the 1960s, the United States ran a series of what were called Sigma War Games, looking at Southeast Asia and what could happen there, such as in Vietnam. And these games did a great job of, of um, basically modeling what would happen. So, for example, one of the Sigma games said that the United States would get into a stalemate with about half a million troops in Vietnam, and society would be um, divided by draft riots, which pretty much happened, right? The game predicted it, though, before it happened, right? Unfortunately, the U.S. government did not take uh, action based on what the game taught. But to give you another example, um, you may have heard of, um, so you, depending on when you, you listen to this, um, the city of Kherson, uh, the Ukrainians really, really wanted to get it back, right? It was the only major city the Russians were able to seize with their 2022 invasion. They really wanted to get it back. But the United States um, sat down, uh, representatives of the United States sat down and war gamed it out, made like a simulation that showed that trying to attack Kherson head on would not go well for the Ukrainians. And that led to a different offensive strategy where the Ukrainians made it look like they were going to attack Kherson, but instead they attacked to the northeast, and there they did much, much better. So in that case, they listened to what the war game said, right? So while we use the term game here a lot of the time, the fact is that by simulating out possible outcomes, we can learn a lot about what would happen. And in that case, this literally could have saved lives, right? Ukraine, a lot of Ukraine soldiers probably would have been killed. They wouldn't have been able to take Kherson with this strategy anyway. Things would have gone badly. So this is some serious stuff, even if we have fun while doing it. Now, the other thing that makes this, of course, a serious class is there will be assignments. You will be expected to fill out response papers based to articles you'll read and videos that you'll watch. Some of the first videos will be ones I make about how I design activities and simulations, but others will be by experts and, and uh, in the field who are, you know, someone who teaches at the Naval War College or something like that who makes a video. So you'll be looking at that and you'll be writing responses to them and we'll be discussing that in class. And that's a lot of the stuff you'll do uh, online. That's the hybrid portion. Um, you will also find a topic uh, from a list of a pr approved list of YouTube channels. And if anyone wants the list, I'm happy to send it to you if you want to get an early start. Um, now, that's enough to get started to figure out, okay, what am I going to do my activity on? Because you're going to design some activities in this class. That's the part that also makes it a real class, which I think will be fun. Now, it's still going to require my approval and additional research, but that should be enough to get you started, right? So a lot of times when you're designing, a, and you're going to be designing a fairly simple activity and simulation, you don't need to have a, a really deep, deep, deep knowledge of it. I'll, I'll help you with this, and this will make more sense. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time here. But the idea is that you're going to find a topic 
uh, with my um, input um, and do some research on it. And then based on that, you'll develop an activity that helps people learn the information based on the idea that they have watched the video, right? So you pick a video from YouTube, you're now gonna design an activity uh, from, and it's from that approved list um, that will help people learn the information from that video. So for example, if you watch a video on D-Day, right? Or if you decide that you're going to look at, at a battle from the American Civil War, it doesn't have to be battle, war, by the way, but that's just the, the, the easiest examples. You would have an activity like a matching activity using cards that would help people learn that information. If you've been in my classes before, you've seen what I do. Um, you would also develop a simulation based on it that helps people understand by building in choice and contingency and that allows for counter counterfactual development while explaining the actual history. So for example, um, I uh, do a um, simulation in my classes about the Battle of Elysia, which is a battle between the Romans and the Gauls. I do that in History 121. And I developed it so that the, the half the students are Gauls, half the students are Romans, and they, I have rules for how they fight each other. Um, there are decisions that they have to make about how they fight each other and how they conduct the campaign. So there, and then they roll dice to see who wins when they have a battle, right? So that's what I mean by choice. They have a choice about how they fight the battle, but there's contingency things. You can make the right choices, but just have bad luck. And that's what the dice represent. And here's what's key. When I teach them the battle, I go through the history, but it's possible for the Gauls to win. And historically the Romans won, but it's possible for the Gauls to win. Um, and so that allows us to see how things could have been different and how they would have been different. Again, if this seems overwhelming, don't worry about it. It's not that complex, but the idea is that you'll pick a topic, right? You will develop an activity that helps people learn information about the topic, and then you develop a simulation that immerses them into the topic, right? And I will be helping you with it. This is something you have the semester to work on. Um, it'll be fine and it should be fun. And you'll also give a presentation right and basically you'll give a speech as if you were one of the people from your topic or a kind of person so to give you that example from elysia you would take on the persona of julius caesar or a legionary or the leader of the gauls a man named vercingetorix or one of the gaelic soldiers and then you would have a presentation where you talk as if you're the person right or, um, and you will be expected not only to give kind of a speech of your own, talk about who you are, but then other people from this class are expected to interact with you and you'll engage in that kind of role playing like you would do in living history. So this is demanding, I think, in terms of energy, any, because you're, this is creative. You're supposed to be active here, right? It's not me simply saying, okay, this is the class. This is what you're going to do exactly. Um, you're going to have to think of some things on your own. You're going to have to do some of your own research. Now, there's no exams or quizzes, right? That time that you would have to spend studying, you get, you will be able to spend on your research. So this class isn't going to take more time than other classes, but it will take more energy, I think, because you do have to engage in that creative process. But the thing is that paying that off, uh, investing that time should be fun and fulfilling, right? Uh, I've had a blast making these simulations. Uh, I've, it's really made, I think, at least from my perspective, it's made the class more interesting. I think students seem to enjoy it. I get a lot more student engagement. And I think if you learn how to do that, that's going to be a skill that you can really use wherever you work. You'll be amazed at how often this kind of thing comes up. But um, I've talked enough. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of what this class is about. Um, if you have any questions, do let me know. If there's something in particular you want to learn about, also let me know because this is a completely new class. Never have taught it before. Uh, very few places uh, offer a class like this. The only place I know about is Georgetown University. I think there's some, some uh, 